Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. What we're going to do this time is a relatively simple game which requires the player to uh, create some kind of three-dimensional composition which is going to provide a structure allowing um, allowing them to get to the top um, right lovely um, so let's just start uh, I hope you enjoy it we're going to start with an empty project and first thing we want to do is to import the assets that I have prepared for you I'm going to drag and drop all of them into unity and into this assets folder like so and wait until everything shows up um, there is a, one of those objects is a is actually a unity package um, and so unity is going to ask ask you whether you want to import all the uh, different things that um, it contains let's just say import it might take a little while and we have it um, there are some minor errors here let's just not um, be concerned with that and let's start immediately the first thing we want to do is um, to create the basic setup for our game it's going to consist out of a plane maybe like that and I'm going to delete the main camera but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go into the standard assets characters first person prefabs and find FPS controller and drag and drop it into Unity. So I'm going to go into the scene view and focus on this object, FPS controller. Maybe pull it out a little bit because it sits in the middle of the plane for now. Okay, so it seems to be some kind of composite object. We don't know what it is, but we're going to find out shortly. So let's just press play. Uh -huh. So you're going to notice that moving the mouse around allows you to observe the environment. Pressing WASD allows you to walk around. And spacebar allows you to jump okay and escape um, enables mouse pointer to be um, visible on the screen so let's just add our villa to the scene and enjoy um, a little interactive walkthrough so I'm going to drag and drop it here and yes it's uh, huge so let's just scale it so that it's roughly appropriate perhaps like this and uh, maybe just move it a little bit downwards and then I'm going to take this controller and uh, well move it somewhere out until I get the view that I like Maybe something like this. Um, I can actually maybe rotate the villa a little bit um, to get a nice um, beginning of the scene. Let's see what happens. Uh huh. I can walk around, I can get close to the villa, but then I actually walk through the walls. I think it's worth fixing this so let's do it real quickly I'm going to go to the villa and add 
some components to it. So component physics mesh collider. And in the inspector, I'm going to take a look at what's going on here. Uh, there is a new component added. It's called mesh collider. Let's see what happens. So now Aha, uh -huh. I cannot walk through the walls anymore. And that's perfect. So let's quickly adjust the visuals here. Mm, I'm going to go into the first person controller and in its hierarchy below, there is this first person character, which actually is a camera together with some other things. I'm going to change the skybox into a solid color because this is how I prefer it. Uh, I want it to be dramatic. And um, for now, that could be it. But I want to show you uh, a little tricks that can potentially make your game look a little better or perhaps um, expand your uh, vocabulary or visual competence here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some materials. So there's going to be one for the villa. There we go. I'm going to drag and drop it Oops, onto the villa. And now I can, I can change the color if I want to, which is great. <clears throat> I'm going to create another material for the ground and drag and drop it onto the plane. Again, I can change the color if I want, like so. Okay, that's a little funny looking. And now, um, I mean, it looks very much like um, some kind of early 90s computer graphics, uh, especially considering the shading. There is one little trick that I can show you here. Um, if we go into lighting, we can create new lighting settings, um, call them something, let's say, um, something like that. And then in this tab, we can just scroll down and uh, the lighting mode, change it into baked indirect and then scroll down. I'm going to instead of CPU, use my GPU. I hope you can do it too. It's, it's going to increase the speed of this calculation. And then I'm going to check down here, ambient occlusion, and leave all the parameters as they are. Hit generate lighting. Something is happening, but yeah, not much of effect. So, what we need to do, we want to go into the villa and in the inspector, we want to check on top of it, the static option, which means that this is an object which is not going to be moving at all, which means that we can have the light for it calculated once and it doesn't need to be recalculated ever again. I'm going to check the same thing for the plane. So plain static, go back to the, to the lighting tab and generate lighting. This might take a little while. So I'm going to pause the video and uh, come back to you once this job is done. Okay, we have it. Um, so now, if we take a look here, 
you can see that it's sort of rendered. I mean, it's rudimentary and it's full of really ugly artifacts like this. Um, and that's because this is clearly um, a mesh that is completely out of control. I downloaded it from from internet. I don't know from where, a very long time ago. So, um, of course, it's good to have clean geometry. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it starts having some kind of interesting vibe to it. On top of all this, we're going to add a little bit of so-called post-processing in order to improve the visual quality of our game. So let's do it just now. Window, Package Manager. And I'm going to search in Unity Registry for POST processing. And I'm going to install this. Okay, it's done. So now, um, what this allows us to do is to, first of all, here in the assets, if I right click, I can now create a post processing profile. So let me do this. I'm just going to give it a name. We don't know yet what it is, uh, but we're going to find out very soon. Now, I'm going to go into first person controller and the camera that actually sits on it. So first person character and add component, which is post process layer. There is a whole bunch of things here. We don't need to be too much concerned. Uh, what I'm going to do, however, is scroll up and go into this camera's layer, which right now is default. I'm going to open up this uh, scroll down and add a layer. Let's just, it's arbitrary. These are all three spots. I'm just gonna put, um, give it a name at the layer 10, whichever, this doesn't matter. Uh, and go back to here and change the layer from default into post. So right now my camera is not sitting on default layer, it's sitting on post layer. The reason for that is post processing wants its object to sit on a particular layer. So now here I can select post and everything seems to be fine. And one more thing that I want to add is post process volume. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to check whether this volume is global and assign the profile that I created here into the empty slot right here. There we go. So what this allows us to do is the following. If I'm on the my post or whatever post processing profile that I just created, in the inspector I can start adding effects. So let's start with vignette perhaps. I'm going to unfold this and check intensity. Aha. Uh -huh. So essentially what we're able to do is to add different kinds of effects on top of our camera. Let's just add some more. Perhaps ambient occlusion. Let's say intensity like this. So you can see this adds screen space ambient occlusion. So sort of an illusion of shading uh, of indirect lightning, lighting. 
I can change its color if I want to um, to be something more matching uh, my general setup. I'm going to add some more effects, uh, perhaps bloom. This is a very common effect and very often abused. Uh, which is precisely what I'm going to do. There we go. And maybe a last thing for now, I'm going to add color grading. And this is very, very useful. Um, it, it allows us to have uh, very detailed control over uh, color appearance and um, the details of how color, colors are displayed here. Uh, one thing that I want to change, however, is um, something according to this uh, dialogue here. Um, I want to go into Edit, Project Settings, and into Player. Scroll down and find in Rendering, Color Space, Gamma, and change it into Linear. It's going to recalculate. Okay, we are done. So now you can see that everything appears darker, but uh, we're going to have much broader dynamic range. And this is precisely what we want to have. So now I'm going to check this box here with tone mapping, maybe change it to this kind of mode, um, adjust post exposure, maybe, maybe play with saturation a little bit, perhaps adjust contrast. I can do things like hue shifting if I want to. And um, maybe we can play also with details here. Adjust it to your own taste, of course, this is this is completely arbitrary. I'm just, uh, I'm just happy to show you that we have this possibility. So now suddenly, our game has a very different vibe to it. I would say, right? Okay. So let's say we're happy with this. I'm going to save my scene. And now take care about um, throwing objects. So first thing I want to do is to go into one of those uh, assets folders. So we have avocado, banana, grapes. So I'm going to go to the avocado and um, drag and drop it into the scene, just like so. And it is somewhere there. Um, if I'm here in the scene view and I press F, we're going to zoom in. So it appears in the middle of everything. Um, what I want to do is, it, besides a 3D object, I also have textures for it. So in order to use these textures, I'm going to create a new material. Let's say avocado material. And um, assign it to this avocado here, either by dragging and dropping here or maybe in the hierarchy, however you want. And now I can take this textures. So like so and and um, put them into the open empty uh, slots in the inspector. So now our object is textured. And besides the diffuse texture, I also have a normal texture, which I'm going to assign right now. Unity tells me that this is not marked as normal map. Uh, fix now, yes. So now you can see that the object appears bumpy as well. I can adjust 
how smooth it is if I want to and other parameters but let's not uh, be too much concerned about it and now let's make this object visible because it sits somewhere in the middle of everything it's not um, it's not so easy to see it so I'm just gonna drag and drop it here and make it much bigger so perhaps something like 20 20 20 maybe that's appropriate scale right okay so we have this object uh, in our game it sits there now what we want is for this object to be um, somehow reacting to the force of gravity and also um, interacting with other objects in the scene by being able to bounce off them and um, yeah essentially behaving like a like a physical object so in order to do that I'm going to add a component called mesh collider to it and I'm going to make sure that I check that it is convex and then also I'm going to add physics rigid body to it so you can see that now it has a mass and it has a drag and so on and so forth um, there are many different properties here so now if I enter the game I'm going to quickly notice that my object falls I mean it falls into the villa but it's not there in the air anymore and that's wonderful so it seems that I created an object which um, needs to obey gravity that's fantastic what I want to do is I want to put it back to zero so it's in the center of everything and now this is an important procedure once I'm happy with what this object does in general and it is ready for me to use it later on as my projectile as something that I want to throw I'm going to take it from the hierarchy and drag and drop it right here and unity then asks me whether I want to create a prefab and that's precisely what I want to do I want to create an original prefab so prefab is um, a kind of object that we might want to use in many different places or mul multiple times in our game and it consists of um, a whole bunch of different things it can be you know it can have scripts on it it can have um, all sorts of manipulations added and then saved um, for later use so this is what a prefab is maybe it's good if I just drag and drop it outside you know just straight into the assets folder so I have my um, avocado here maybe I should actually rename it so that I'm not confused it's an avocado prefab perfect so I'm going to delete it from the scene and now let's do the magic so let's try to add this kind of object with some kind of interaction so by we need some kind of script for it so right click create C sharp script um, add object so what we want the script to do is actually something like that right it's a script that is going to do the dragging and dropping for us I'm going to open it and try to make it happen here we are 
Um, so first of all, what we need in order to manipulate some kind of object with a script, we want to have a reference to this object. So I'm going to create a variable game object fruit and it needs to be public and here in the update function we want to use conditional statement which is going to require the user or the player to press some kind of key so that the fruit is added so I'm going to write if input dot get key down and then in the parenthesis I want to say key code dot let's say space is used WASD are used let's just say Q perhaps right so if the key is pressed and this key is uh, essentially letter Q then let's do uh, whatever is in between this curly brackets and what we want is to instantiate an object so I'm gonna instantiate our fruit okay let's see what happens I'm going to save this go back to the editor and now I'm going to use this script so perhaps uh, it would be convenient to create another empty game, game object which is going to be called script holder and drag and drop this script here and what you can see is that it has an empty field where it expects a reference to the fruit object that we want to use. So I'm going to drag and drop from my assets folder the avocado prefab right there. And let's see what happens. So I'm in the game and pressing Q add something here right I mean we cannot see anything because these objects are in the middle of our scene where the villa is standing but the basic functionality is there that's wonderful so let's quickly fix the situation here what we want is that this object is not added to its own center. We want to have a control over where this object is added and the best way to do it is to actually provide a reference to some object that is in the scene so that the newly created one is going to appear um, at the um, coordinates of the object that we provide. So what I'm going to do is create an empty game object and call it let's say a reference like so and just for the, for convenience right now I'm going to position it somewhere here in front of us so that we can see what's going on and then I'm going to go back to my script create a public transform this time reference and um, I'm going to modify this instantiate comment and provide you can see that there are many options and provide a position and rotation for the newly created object. So I'm going to take reference dot position and then quaternion dot identity like so. Let's not be bothered with 
quaternions right now. For now, you, do, you just need to know that um, there are ways of describing rotations in three-dimensional space. Uh, we're using them all the time in your 3D modeling software. We're going to get back to this. So save. Let's see what happens. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. There is some kind of error here. And that's, of course, because I didn't provide the reference to my script. So I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Okay. So now we have control over where our object appears. That's perfect. So now it is time to um, somehow relate where the object appears to our position as a player, right? Because um, you know, the static object in the sky is just um, there and this doesn't uh, really do much for our purpose. What we want is that this reference is somehow associated with our first person controller. So perhaps what I'm going to do is to put it into into its hierarchy under first person character. So right now, if I zero it, you can see that instead of um, global zero, it just becomes attached to the camera sitting on the first person controller. So now I can create some kind of offset from it. And let's see what happens. Okay, so wherever I go, the objects appear just in front of me. Now that's perfect. The next step is to add the drawing force. Let's do this quickly. I'm going to save and go back to my code editor and try to add the force to this newly created object. So in order to do it conveniently, what I'm going to do is to create a local variable here called game object new fruit equals whatever is the result of this operation here. Right. So what this comment says is instantiate a new fruit in the position of the reference. Let's keep that part for now and save whatever is the data created under this name so that in the next line I can say new fruit dot um get component of a kind rigid body oops like so and add falls that's great so now what kind of force requires a little bit of investigation. So here in this parenthesis, we need to put 
um, the kind of force that we want to use. Let's try to figure out what it could be. So we have the reference. Um, this reference has coordinates. So it has directions, forward, up, left, right, back, and so on and so forth. Um, so we can use this in order to generate a vector for the force. What I'm going to do is create a vector called force and it's going to be somehow derived from reference dot forward which is um, a unit vector pointing um, forward and um, yeah and I'm just going to use this force here in my parentheses as you can see I commented this thing out so this means that this is inactive for now I'm going to bring it back put the force here save it and let's see if this works Okay. Hmm, not much happening here. Uh, perhaps it's just too weak. So I can do this multiply by, let's say, 10. So this means take that and multiply it by 10 and save it back into this name. Save that. Hmm. That's not very spectacular. Well, that's probably related to the type of force that I'm using. So here there is uh, this possibility to enter force mode and uh, I guess I uh, I forgot about that. So force mode dot impulse. This should fix it. Okay, so now we're throwing. That's perfect. Let's quickly adjust um, so that we are not using this hard-coded number here, but we have a convenient way of editing uh, from the Unity editor. So public and um, strength and it's going to be 10 in the beginning I'm going to save this go back to the editor and now my script holder allows me to change this force whenever I want. Okay, that's great. One last thing that we want to do here is to make sure that our objects actually stick to each other and to um, the scene objects, so to the villa. For this, I'm going to need another script. So I'm going to create it. Mm, let's just call it stick it. Yeah, that's
that's a bug. I'm going to close that and open again. Okay, wonderful. So this is going to be um, just one function. Uh, we're going to delete all of that. So we're left with just a class definition. And inside here, we're just going to say on collision, enter. And if we double click this, it should autocomplete private void on collision enter. And then uh, we just don't know what it is, right? But uh, we're going to find out very quickly, very shortly. So um, let's use debug.log and say hit something. So this is a very good way to find out what's actually going on in your code. Um, this is going to generate um, some text in the console so that we can know whether this is working. So I'm going to save this, um, go back to the editor, and now click on my avocado prefab, scroll down, and add component, stick it, right? So now let's see what happens. Okay. So as you can see, our console is giving us a time tag and the, co and the uh, line that we have written in the code hit something. So the object that we're drawing is actually aware that it hits something. And that's great. We just want to use that. So what we want to do is actually um, the following. We want to go into its rigid body and into its constraint and then freeze both position and rotation by code, right? So what I'm going to do is um, get back here and say the following. So if it's actually, okay, the script is sitting on the object that we're drawing. So what we want to do is this, which is the object that this script is sitting on, get component of a type rigid body, okay, dot constraints. So we're accessing um, precisely this. And now what we want to say is equals rigid body constraints dot freeze all semicolon. So what this line of code is doing is essentially applying freeze all command to the constraints of the rigid body of the object that this script is sitting on whenever a collision is detected. Um, okay, let's save this. Go back here. Our script is already assigned. So let's see if it works. Uh huh. Okay, they stick. And actually, our game is almost ready.
So let's just save this and continue with some improvements. So first of all, I want to have uh, this different objects to throw at the villa. So essentially what I'm going to do is exactly the same that I did to Avocado. I'm just going to make a prefab with the same properties that Avocado has out of banana and grapes. So um, this might be a little boring, but let's just still go through it. I'm going to add the banana here and focus on it. Let's sit right there. Maybe scale it. I don't know if this is a good size. Whatever. Like that. Create a material for it. And make sure that it's assigned. And then apply this diffuse texture to it. And then additionally, I want to add physics component mesh collider to it. And additionally, I also want to add a rigid body to it, like so. So now, um, and also, I want to add stick it to it. Okay, so with all that, I can create a prefab. and delete it from the scene. I'm going to do the same with grapes. So I'm going to add them here, scale them, let's say, like that. Well, that's kind of huge. I don't know. Create a material. And assign it and assign the diffuse texture. They look great and they're very smooth. Um, and now also add physics mesh collider to it, make it convex, and then also rigid body. So with all this, now I can also add my script on top of everything and drag and drop here and create original prefab. Delete it. Uh, just for um, my convenience, I'm going to rename it so that I remember that these are actually prefabs. Um, I could reorganize this a little bit because it starts looking a little messy, but you know, you, you can do it yourself. This is not very complicated, but now what we want to do is instead of having one fruit, uh, window here for, for a reference to a fruit object, what we want is to have multiple. And this is what we were doing last time. So let's refresh a little. So instead of one game object, I'm going to indicate that by this name, I actually mean an array, like so. So now you can see that there is going to be a mistake here because, well, Unity tells you why this is wrong. Um, essentially, we need to say which from this array we want to use. So if we say zero, 
it's going to be perfectly fine. But that's not what we want. What we want is to create a random number here. So let's create um, a variable here. Let's just call it random index. And I'm going to create this variable right here. It's going to be called integer random index. And it's going to be a random, oops, range from zero to fruit dot length. Okay. And we want to make sure that this is not some kind of number in between zero and one or zero, you know, it doesn't, it cannot be a float, it has to be a whole number like integer. So let's use a math command math function dot round to integer whatever is the result of this random uh, range operation so now if I save this everything should be working just fine I'm going to go back to my unity editor And now on the script holder, fruit is not anymore a single window, but it allows me to add multiple objects. So I'm just going to drag and drop the three different objects that I created, like so. And let's see if it works. Under grapes. Bananas, grapes, bananas, avocados, grapes. Yeah, perfect. So maybe just small adjustments. I think we could um, change the scale a little bit so that they're all more uniform. So bananas are too small. Let's make them like this. And grapes are also too small. Let's make them like so. Let's see if this is any better. Yeah, that's just perfect. And I can jump on it. Perfect. One more adjustment. Um, I would like to use a little bit of a little bit more randomness here. Um, when we're adding objects, um, rotation of them is always the same, and I would rather use a random rotation. So what I want to do is I want to create a random vector. Um, so it's going to be called random rotation and it's going to be a new vector three with all the three uh, coordinates randomized between zero and one. So, or no, between zero and 180, that's going to be degrees, oil or degrees. Okay, so let's do that random range 0 180 like that okay 1 2 3 so that's x y and z semicolon of course very important so we have random rotation and now instead of quaternion identity what we're going to do is Quaternion, whoops, let 
uh, dot Euler and random rotation. Perfect. Everything is fine here. Just close all the parentheses. Save. Let's see when it updates how this works. Okay, so now they're initially rotated differently, you see, and this creates more lively composition, I would say. Okay, perfect. Now it's the time to create a little user interface. Um, essentially, we, want, we don't want our game to be too easy. So we're going to create a little counter um, so that we have limited amount of fruit to throw. Let's just do that. Um, I prepared um, a little GUI element here, like the graphical user interface element for you. Uh, they're sitting here in this folder. I'm going to change them into sprites so that I can use them for my purposes here. Like that. And I'm going to um, create a new UI image it sits right here right now and um, I'm going to drag the lemon here beautiful and lock it to the upper right upper left corner and maybe create some offset like that it looks nice um, and here's a little trick. So what I want this object to do is to, on the one hand, have this outline, but then also have a feel to it, uh, which is going to react somehow to the amount of fruit we have left. Um, so let's just add this as well. I'm going to create an exact copy of this image and replace it's lemon with the lemon fill like that and maybe uh, change the color a little bit maybe adjust the transparency like that it looks good I think um, so now um, maybe let's just give this a proper name Now, what we want to do is to, first of all, count the amount of fruit that we are throwing and make this react to this changing number. So let's modify our script um, here. We're going to say public int max fruit and that's the number that we're going to start with let's say we can only have 20 All right and then what we're going to do is to create another integer which is going to give us the number that we currently have maybe let's just call it fruit left right and in the start we're going to assign it fruit left uh, to the max fruit so that it starts 
with whatever number is here. But at each throw, we're going to decrease this number. So we're going to say fruit left minus minus, right? And in order to figure out whether it works, we can just say debug dot log fruit left like that. Save. Let's come here. So now our script is slightly different. We have maximum fruit. And let's start drawing and observe what happens in the console. So down there in the left bottom corner, you can see the decreasing number. Okay, perfect. So that works. So now what we want to do is we want to stop throwing if this number hits zero. So we need another conditional statement over all of that, essentially saying if fruit left is bigger than zero, then do all this, right? Otherwise, let's just say for now, no fruit, right? That's perfect. Let's see if this works. Aha, uh -huh. we're out of fruit. We cannot throw anything anymore. That's great. So now what's left to do is to indicate this decreasing number with our user interface element. So what we want to do is to go to lemon fill, scroll down and change image type from simple to filled. There are different options here and there is fill amount. Take a look at what happens. Right, so we can change this number and it's going to give us a different uh, feel depending on options here as well. So um, I'm going to change from radial to maybe vertical. Yeah, that's good. Or maybe horizontal. Yeah, horizontal, no, let's do vertical. Okay, so I'm going to start with one and now go to my code and provide a reference here to that image. So in order to work with any UI elements, I need to declare that I want to do that, right? Using Unity Engine.UI. And here I'm just going to provide this public image reference. Um, let's say fruit meter, like so. And uh, maybe now it's good to um, create more readability in this code. So instead of trying to cram all the functionality into all these lines, I'm just going to create a separate function outside of that. 
but inside of our class. So I'm just going to create a void update fruit meter like that and it's going to need a an integer nope a float value like so and what this is going to do is it's going to take the fruit meter dot um, can we have access to the fill perfect to the fill amount exactly and it equals value okay so um, but now let's think a little bit if we are starting with 20 and we're decreasing by one while what we want to modify is this lemon fill which goes from one to zero we need to do some simple maths behind the scene so actually what we want to do is to hmm, to divide this value by max fruit right because if we start with 20 and divide by 20 we're going to end up with one and then if the value decreases and we still divide it by 20 it's going to be a smaller and smaller fraction which is precisely what we want now here after decreasing the value i'm going to call my update root meter function so i'm just going to go here and say update fruit meter and provide fruit left number to it I'm going to save it and let's see if everything is fine so script holder needs reference to our fruit meter user interface element I'm just going to drag and drop it there and hopefully it's going to work. Oh, that's wonderful. So it should hit zero. Yes, when I'm out of fruit. It's perfect. We're almost done. The last element of this game is um, some kind of um, teleport to uh, to indicate that we're uh, we're, we completed the task so uh, in this case it's going to be a strawberry it's going to sit somewhere in the scene and in particular it's going to sit on top of the villa so we have to climb the villa and then shoot at the strawberry and then we're going to be teleported to the end of the game which is going to be another scene by the way so um, let's prepare the strawberry very quickly. I know it's it's just completely hilarious, but let's uh, you know let's just enjoy it. I'm gonna drag and drop the strawberry into here. Uh, maybe position it somewhere that I can see it better. Uh, where are we? There we go. Here's the strawberry. I'm going to create a strawberry material. And uh, assign it. And make sure that the strawberry is perfectly textured. Fix it. It looks wonderful. Um, so uh, perhaps it could be slightly bigger I like that and well, let's now just uh, find a good spot for it but maybe before we position it in the villa 
maybe it's a good idea to test the functionality. So to check whether, um, whether it works. So first of all, we have it here, that's good. Um, we want to be able to shoot at it. Oh yeah, well, so it needs um, a collider. Um, let's just add it. Strawberry component physics mesh collider. That's perfect. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now things are sticking to it. And now uh, our last script for today is going to be the teleporting script. So whenever the strawberry is hit, it's going to uh, ask the scene management to go to a different scene. So in order to do that, let's just cre quickly create another scene. I'm just going to save this one because I'm happy with it. I'm going to go into new scene, basic. There we go, there's nothing here looks like that. Uh, I'm just going to create a solid background, which is nice and pink. And maybe um, UI text element, which is going to say uh, victory. And it's going to be white, and it's going to be big. Um, yes, the text should be much bigger, the text a window. And it's going to be perfectly centered. And the text also is going to be aligned in the center. And I actually prepared a little font for you here. So I'm going to drag and drop it instead of boring Arial. I mean, look at that. So that's perfect. Uh, let's just save this as uh, and scene and go to build settings, add it and go into the Vila scene and add it as well. Maybe reverse the hierarchy here because we actually want to start with the Villa. Anyhow, so this is that. So now what's left is the script that is going to somehow react to our projectiles hitting the strawberry. Well, it shouldn't be very complicated. Actually, it's going to be some kind of modification of our stick it script, right? I'm going to go and create a new C sharp script here. Oops, something's odd. Yeah, let's just not mess around with this. Um, let me do it again. Okay, teleport. So I'm going to open it. Perfect. So now I don't want any of this. And what I want is the same functionality that I have on my projectiles on my uh, fruit that I'm throwing. But the action that results from this object being hit must be a different one. So I'm going to go to the stick it and take a look at this. Aha, okay, so I want this on collision enter. So let's just say on collision enter. But instead of freezing everything, I'm going to be using Unity Scene Management. 
and I'm going to call scene manager and load scene which is called hmm, if I remember correctly end scene or something like that um, let's try that mm -hmm. yes this one so make sure you're not uh, making a mistake here uh, however your scene is called it should be uh, properly um, named here so yes and let's see if this works I mean it's as simple as that so I'm trying different fruit and if I throw this I think um, of course it is necessary to add the script that we just created onto the strawberry. So this should do. Let's try. All right. Perfect. So we have our functionality. Now, I think the only thing that is left is to position the strawberry um, in a place that is not easily accessible maybe right here like that perfect so Right now, we have a very challenging game in front of us. Let's enjoy. Okay, let's try to do it. Oops. Aha. There's a strawberry. Okay, that's it for today.